<laughs> so uh, welcome to episode yet to be determined of the hindsight, the Rhode Island National Guards podcast. Today we've got Sergeant First Class Dennis Mendes. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here, sir. Yeah. So just so you know, uh, we have no idea what order we're releasing these in. We seem to be kind of pulling episodes out of a hat. So you could be second. You could be sixth. No <laughs> about it. Yeah. Right on. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, so today we're talking about the GT Enhancement Program. But first, we're going to start with your personal story, which we kind of got a glimpse of. Um, sure. But I want to I connect. I want to find out why. So once upon a time, once upon a time, there was a kid named De- Dennis Mendes. Yes. Yes, he was. And for God only knows what reason, he decided the Army. Yep. So I was 28 years old. Um and I was already a school teacher. I'd been teaching for a few years at that point. And I decided I wanted to serve my country in 89. Sorry, 98. A little dyslexic too, which is great for a drill sergeant, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I, uh, I joined uh, the Army Reserve, went to, um, went to did split up, uh, basic training, then AIT. Graduated AIT, was put in a training position um, then that battalion closed down, um, because of my education, I made rank very, very quickly. Um, and I went to, um, excuse me. Uh, I went to, um, uh, drill sergeant school, graduated drill sergeant school in 2002. Beca- again, because I'm a school teacher, I was able to do full trails or full cycles, uh, throughout the summer. I'd go down there at the beginning of the summer and, and help them out with the summer surge. Um, so I got a lot of time on the trail, uh, a lot of time doing that, uh, and learned a lot about teaching. Um, because believe it or not, drill sergeants are teachers. You know, they're trainers, they're coaches, they're mentors, they're teachers. So I got a lot of unique experiences. Um, and then um, eventually, around 2015, I, I decided it was time to move on from my drill sergeant duties. And I joined another unit, um, which was not a great experience for me in the Army Reserve. So I decided to join the Guard. Um, And I joined the Guard. They put me in the RSP program as a drill sergeant. So it's fun for the whole family. Yeah. So what was your primary MOS? My primary MOS. Blah, blah. My primary MOS. (laughs) Still like my voice. (laughs) 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 My primary primary MOS is 92 Yankee. So I'm a supply sergeant. Funny thing is, I've never actually been a supply sergeant. My first, um, my first assignment was as a training person. So I was in a S2 doing training stuff. And then um, I became a drill sergeant. So I've never been in a supply room. Funny story. Um, in AIT, I graduated distinguished undergrad. Um, about six months later, I went to what was then called PLDC, um, became an E5. Then I went to ANOC about six months later, distinguished undergrad. Um, seven years later, I went to ANOC to get my seven and almost failed because I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. They're like, uh, yeah, so you, for this, you've got to fill out a 2404. And I'm like, what's that? <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. It was really, really bad. <laughs> so how did you get through that? A um, lot of work, a lot of help from my peers, and, of course, control F. That is everybody's friend. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, a, that's the trick to most Army schools. Yep. Control find. And Air Force. So this is the first time we've talked about split op um, basic training. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to circle back. I don't know if you have a program like this in the Air Force. Can you tell us a little bit about the split option so split option are for people usually for juniors that join the army uh they they're 16 they join the army they go to basic training between their junior and senior year and then after they finish uh they go back to school they finish their senior year and then they do their ait okay and um like what's the advantage of that why would someone do a split option well it's it's cool because you get to join at a younger age um, you're instantly making money. I mean, it's not a whole lot of money, of course, for an E1 or an E4 or whatever um, at that point. But it's still, you're making money. You're you're getting time in. You're putting in retirement. 
you know, and at 16, not too many people are thinking about retirement, but it's, you know, it's still a pretty cool option. Do you guys uh, have that in the Air Force? Yeah, I was a split option. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, so my first career field when I came in in 2008 was undergoing a consolidation, and seats for AIT were super limited, or as we call it in the Air Force tech school. Um, so I didn't want to wait. I'd already been waiting maybe like five months for dates that coincided so I could be pipeline. Um, and I just didn't want to wait any longer. And I was like, just send me to basic training because then, um, my goal at the time was to get into the funeral honors program Mm -hmm. so that I could continue college and had a flexible part-time job that my recruiter actually told me about the funeral honors program. So that was really my motivation behind pushing for a split option. It wasn't common, but it was available to us. And I think it still is. Yeah. I think, I think opposing might've been split option. You were split option. Yeah, but then you had to wait for tech school. Yeah. So she was split option too. Ah, I think that's really my only regret. So I, I enlisted at 22. Okay. And I think if I woke up tomorrow as a teenage boy, uh, <laughs> hands down, no question, I would I would split up so I can get into the Army as soon as I possibly could. Yeah. Um, well, you'd be, what, four years closer to retirement at this point? I would be. I would be. And I would have had a lot more enlisted time before commissioning, mm-hmm. which is, I guess, the other real regret. I desperately miss soldiering. I don't because I still do it. <laughs> yeah, rub it in. Keep keep rubbing it in. But uh, okay, so you and I met at pretty much the EDOC. I mean, I think we had some facial recognition prior to that. Yeah, What's yeah. the EDOC though? You got to tell the audience what the EDOC is. Well, I was going to get there. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's the Educational Operations Center, um, and it was stood up in um, late July of 2020, so that uh, the National Guard could help problem solve and figure out how to get schools running for the 2020, 2021 year. And, um, they said, Hey, we need an educator. And you know, they picked me. Yeah. We only have like two of those. It's like you and we have a music teacher, Kristen Marcotte. Pretty. Oh no. There's also captain Wilson. There's three. There's three. three. (laughs) So that's a, for those of you at home, we absolutely would love more school teachers. Hint, hint. That's (laughs) but, um, and then for anyone watching at home, well into the future, if you don't remember, back in 2020, there was absolutely no guarantee that schools were going to come back Truth. in the fall of uh, 2020. Right. Truth. Um, there was a uh, schools mostly got dismissed early. I think Rhode Island left in-person schools in April, Jill, um, March 13th, March 13th, and there was no guarantee that they were going to come back. True. And so the Education Operations Center got stood up literally to to problem solve and figure out, I think the first problem you guys had was, can we move humans from their homes into the schools? It was a a busing problem. Oh, it was, and that was huge. And it, it seemed insurmountable at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, but with a lot of creative thinking and uh, a lot of collaboration, we figured it out. And with Connecticut and Massachusetts, not busing children. I think that helped, right? Yeah, that did. That did. Cause we borrow, we, borrowed some of their buses yeah it's <laughs> helpful right yeah and then at some point uh, somebody i assume ride department of education somebody said man you guys cracked the code on this can you guys stick around we've got uh, a whole bag full of problems to work through yeah and uh y- y- yes absolutely and it was it was funny because i was anticipating being on orders for about a month um going right back to school teaching uh, come September. And then they said, no, we, we really want you to stay. And I said, it's good to be loved. So I decided to stay. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did talk to my, uh, superintendent and asked her, I said, the army is ordering me to do this. I'm going to be on orders. Um, but I want to make sure that it's okay with you because we're working with schools. And she said that it would be good to have a representative from my school system on this on this board and i think it's it's been beneficial yeah so that's where you and i really kind of met oh yeah we work together um and i found out about this other project that you do for the national guard in conjunction with captain wilson who we just talked about right um the gt enhancement program yes can you tell me a little bit about that Oh, I can talk about that for hours, but, uh, you've got 45 minutes, Roger. Um, (laughs) (laughs) so 
a lot of people taking the ASVAB um, when they first enter into the army, they're inexperienced. They've learned some stuff in school and they're now uh, seniors in high school and they're asked about how to add and subtract fractions and how to do percentages and um, a lot of lower level math that everybody's forgotten, right? So when they take this, this test, um, especially if they're from a, a disadvantaged school system, um, such as you know inner city urban school systems, um, transient populations, uh, school systems with transient populations, um, their scores are relatively low. Um, the general technical score, uh, or GT, um, is basically what allows you to get a job. If you have a GT of 110 or higher, you can basically do anything you want. Um, the lower it gets, the lower your opportunities. So we saw an opportunity, Captain Wilson and I, uh, saw an opportunity to start this program along with, um, along with uh, Sergeant Lindsey Walsh and spearheading it was uh, Lieutenant Colonel Manning, um, Michael Manning. Um, and Corey designed the program and I came in, we made some changes, we, we, we ran some classes and we noticed that um, people were coming in with GT scores of 89s and raising them up to a point where they could get a job that they enjoyed. Because if you've got a general technical of 89, your, your, your options are exceptionally limited. Um, but if we can get you up to a 110, you can do whatever you want. We've had people uh, come take the course. It's a five week course, um, uh, two hours a day, because we don't want to, we, we, we played with the times. Like we tried a four hour day, that was a little tough. We tried a six hour day, that was impossible. People were burnt. Um, so we decided two hours was kind of like the sweet spot where they can really learn a lot of stuff, practice it, and move on, and then we just keep backtracking, making sure that we're building a pathway and, and, and a method of thinking so that they can take the, uh, take the ASVAB and, and do well. Uh, so far we have had um, a lot of success. We have over a 90% success rate um, of people hitting their goals. Um, we have had individuals get AGR jobs as recruiters because their general technical wasn't there. So they took our course, they're not recruiters. We have a few of those. Uh, we have uh, one, uh, a couple of people that are now um, training up for SF. Um, we have people becoming MPs. Um, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> uh, we have, um, you know, we have people in the officer candidate program, uh, quite a few people in the officer candidate program. They needed to get to that 110, and you know, they were able to make it happen with the with the proper proper coursework, proper tutelage, proper learning. So, it's not often in jobs that you see tangible benefits. So, how does that feel for you to see that you've actually improved some part of our organization? Um, I'm humbled by it. First of all, to, to, to be able to be a part of it. Um, I'm exceptionally humbled uh, by it, but I'd be lying if, if I didn't say it was freaking amazing to see somebody come in with a, you know, GT score of under a hundred, um, getting a 110 and going to officer candidate school. And, um, me having to salute them after it and it's it's an awesome salute it really is it's an amazing salute to know that you had a part in actually making this person's life better um making this person's options open um or, and making this individual want to stay in the guard longer is that why you got into teaching um yeah i i, I got into teaching um because i like to help people yeah all right so if this is the first time a soldier is hearing about this, um, what's the, how do you sign up for it? Well, um, we have, we're, we're kind of going by word of mouth. Um, you can uh, call me um, on my cell phone. Um, 
can I give that out here? Yeah. Or? Do you want us to just flash it right on the screen? Sure. We'll leave it in the comments. Bam. <laughs> um, so <laughs> it's um, it's four zero one four three nine four four eight one. Um, the act now. Yeah. Woo-hoo, <laughs> that's four three nine. Yes. Um, so um, yeah, they can call me directly, um, and that's how usually it's been. Um, and we have a course running on the 26th of July through the 27th of August. That is five weeks, even though it doesn't sound like it. It is. Uh, we meet, uh, we'll be meeting uh, 8.30 to 10.30 uh, here at JFHQ. Um, so we'll be meeting here. It's four days a week. So we'll be meeting here 8.30 to 10.30, Monday through Thursday um, uh, for five weeks. Um, and... That's the next course. There is a fall course planned, but the the dates are yet to be determined, but it's probably going to be more of an evening course. That makes sense. Is right. that just Army, or is that something the Air could attend? Would that benefit them? Um, I do believe it would benefit the Air, uh, the Air Guard, um, and we take any service members. You say any service members, would you take... Navy, Coast Guard. Well, I'd, I'd have a little disdain, but yeah, I guess. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> so for you, you squids watching at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how, how it would work with their orders or, or how, that would, how the details would pan out, but I'll teach anybody. Yeah, I feel like that's probably something we could work out if, uh, if Naval Station Newport had a couple of sailors who wanted to raise their... I don't know if they have ASVABs and GTs. I don't know what the Navy does. But nobody does. <laughs> <laughs> Least of all the Navy. <laughs> but there you go, Naval Station Newport, if you're listening at home. Uh, we, can, we can help. Well, that's good. So what's the biggest takeaway that you've got in from this program, from the GT Enhancement Program? Um, the biggest takeaway is that it, it strengthens the military force by keeping people where they want to be. Nobody wants to be in a job that they don't like. Um, and it's even worse when their options are literally limited by a, a test they took two, three, five, ten 10 years ago. Um, it, it, one time, literally one day determine their entire career. Um, and for that to, for, for them to come in and be able to improve that. And now, broaden their broaden their options um and raise their horizons it's 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 a great it's a great feeling and that's what i take away and, and that's no no exaggeration i mean you've you've had people who've been in, in for 10 years uh we had a guest on our podcast a couple of weeks ago uh sergeant seer okay she went through your course she's an agr she's been in for a while. 12 years i think she and i enlisted the same year and uh yeah so we're not talking about just E ones, E twos. We're talking deep career AGRs. Well, we've had E sevens. Okay. We even had a first sergeant. No kidding. We did for an MOS change, or what was the story there? I think, um, and I'm not a hundred percent clear on that story, but she was trying to improve her GT score and go to uh, special forces. Got it. Okay, that's a that's an interesting story. It is. I like that. Me too. Um, do you have a particular moment that, you know, really stands out to you? Uh, during the course? For, you know, for your time having done the course. Right. Um, there were several. Um, but my favorite, and I'll classify it, right? So it's a classification of a moment. It's, it's when the student goes, oh, I get it now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are my two favorite words. Oh yeah. The aha moment. Yep. It's, it's, it's cool. It's like, wow. Hey, I worked today. <laughs> I accomplished <laughs> something today. It sounds like it feels good. Yeah. So you, you were giving a few examples before of things that uh, service members kind of have challenges with and obviously math, right? Mm-hmm. No, no one really likes math. Even people who are good at math don't really like math. <laughs> That's why I'm public affairs. So, I mean, I assume you have a lot of experience teaching math. Um, yeah, well, science, um, I'm a science teacher. 
Um, and I do teach a lot of math and science. Um, I have a, a colleague uh, who's a teacher, and she says, math is power. And I say, science is applied math. So kind of is. So we do teach a lot of math. Um, we do also vocabulary. Um, and we also do reading comprehension because those are also important parts. And um, in certain situations, we also work on what's called the ST, uh, which involves a little bit more of like mechanics, like physics and, and, and gears and fluid pressures and stuff. Okay. If, uh, if the soldiers... Um if the challenge isn't math specific, if the, if the challenge is more English, English as a second language, um, are you guys equipped for that? We are, um, we help, uh, because it's not just about the information. It's about test taking strategies. So, uh, for example, um, some of the things we teach is on a reading comprehension. Don't read the paragraph first, read the question first read the choices, then read the paragraph. Because it's not just about, um, it's not just about the information and teaching content, it's about how to take the test too. Okay. Because if I may, you have a very limited number, you have a limited number of, oh my gosh, you have a limited time for each question. About, for example, on reading comprehension or or arithmetic knowledge, you only have about two minutes a question. So take it as fast as you can. Be careful, but use the test to your advantage. And we, 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 we teach them how to do that too. Do okay. you ever encounter situations where maybe somebody's just a slow reader and how there are ways to help them improve that? The only way to really improve a reader is by reading. Um, that's where the test taking strategies kind of kind of fall into play um, because sometimes, many times, the uh, answer to the question will be in the first three or four sentences of a 10-sentence paragraph um, and or a 10-sentence sen ten passage. So that'll save you time right there. It probably, I would imagine, helps you cut out all the superfluous information as well. If, Absolutely. If you know what you're digging for, mm -hmm. you can just ignore all the extra stuff. Mm -hmm. well, that makes sense. Um, I don't know. What do you, what do you got? I'm interested in the drill sergeant stuff. So how do you take all that drill sergeant experience and apply it where you are now? Um, well, with the RSP, it's easy because I'm still a drill sergeant with the RSP. But like I said, with, with, I'm trying to figure out how to explain this, but so and not be insulting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so teachers um, in schools teach a certain way, um, and that's the way they're trained to teach. I was trained to teach that way. When I became a drill sergeant, I noticed that um, there's a different way. Now, I'm not saying I yell at students and smoke them in class, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the principal will get a couple of uh, angry phone calls about that. <laughs> maybe. Uh, maybe it happened once. Anyway, um, <laughs> but the point of the matter is it's, it's about doing, right? It's not about teaching information. It's about doing. Crawl, walk, run, right? As a drill sergeant at BRM, we show them the rifle. We teach them the rifle. We teach them how to take it. We teach them how to take it apart. Then we, you know, group in zero and then, you know, there's a process and it's a slow, gradual process up to qualification day. Um, you can do that with education too. You can start a slow process and the culminating event is, is having them do. Prime example, um, I had a, I taught an anatomy class. Um, great class, a um, lot of fun. Um, but, and, and, you know, we dissected a couple of things and yada, yada, yada. But I really wanted to have them do something with the anatomy, right? So um, what we did was is uh, we, we ran a mass casualty program. So we had a mock mass casualty where there were several injuries, um, obviously made up injuries, um, 
and we had a professional makeup artist come and actually like put spikes through people and it was like breathtaking. Yeah, that's incredible. That's uh, disgusting. <laughs> I think for the applied part, which is something you had mentioned earlier, you're applying your knowledge. I think yeah. that's a fantastic training opportunity in a controlled environment. Right, exactly. And and like I said, they they now took everything that they learned that semester and now applied it to an actual situation. By the way, uh, interesting comment. The first time we ran this program, the Boston bombing was the next week. Oh. And it was really cool. You want to talk about aha moments. Mm. Um, my students came in because it was April vacation when that happened. Uh, my students came in the next week and they were like, well, that's terrible, but I would have known what to do. I would have done this. I would have done this. I would have done this. And I was like, oh, if I had a heart, it would have touched it. <laughs> <laughs> Where, when did you lose that along the way? Was that drill sergeant school? Yeah, they take it out. Yeah, they take it just out. put that in a box and you can have that back when you yeah, leave they the put, army. They, they basically put a bunch of rocks in its place. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. So um, drill sergeant stuff aside, um, how have you juggled being a teacher and just being a drilling reservist soldier? Um, are there any synergies there? Are there any difficulties there? Um, there can be, uh, obviously with anything. Um, <clears throat> uh, for example, these, this past year being out of school was, was kind of a bummer. Um, I did great things. Um, I mean, I didn't do great things. The e-doc did great things. Um, and I was happy to be a part of that, but I missed teaching. Um, but a lot of the times, like I said before, sometimes I can bring the army into, or techniques into my teaching, army techniques into my teaching, and it, it, it does synergize, and it makes it better. And vice versa, I, I hope. I hope experiencing life as a teacher has brought stuff to the guard, too. Yeah, I mean, the GT Improvement Program is one, one example of that. But also... Uh, teaching and training soldiers, um, you know, getting that, getting that new fresh soldier and being able to train them up in a way that's, that's, um, rigorous, but respectful. Rigorous and respectful. It almost, and hearing your story, it almost sounds like it chose you. Um, yeah, I think so. You know, you enlisted in the army to be a supply sergeant and <laughs> that didn't happen. No, it did not. <laughs> no, it did not. Uh, which is probably better. There's a lot of heartache there. So oh, yeah. very quick segue just because it literally happened this morning. Oh my. My, uh, my supply sergeant from back when I was the Echo Company commander called me this morning to say that this item that we had lost in transit uh, on the deployment. So this is, this is 2018. Oi. 2018. Was it the bridge? Actually, 2017. We <laughs> was it the bridge you lost? <laughs> I never lost that bridge. Oh, okay. That's that's a bridge is big, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. They're like you know 20 21 to 35 million dollars depending on the bridge. <laughs> um, nice. No, so 2017 we're deploying, and the uh, the truck that's moving our our container rolled over. Oof. Contracted truck, so no no soldiers were hurt, but a sensitive item goes missing. And my XO and my supply sergeant and my unit movement guy, uh, they spend probably between two and 300 hours of their time over the next three months looking for this sensitive item because it's a, it's a sensitive, sensitive item. item. And if you're going to do a flip on a sensitive item, you better prove that you you did the work. Right. And we did the work. I mean, we, we ripped our connexes apart. We ripped apart connexes that weren't even ours, connexes that were already in transit when this accident occurred, I mean, we looked everywhere for this sensitive item. And today, my uh, my supply sergeant from 2017 called me to say they found this item. It was in our sister unit's supply cage the nice. entire time. Oh. The entire time. So, Present and accounted for. Yeah. Yep. So we've got to cancel this uh, four-year-old flipple. <laughs> I mean, I could never be I don't think I could be an effective supply sergeant because we all know that drill sergeants can only count to four. So I it, just be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. <laughs> and now we know why they have the recruits always count off on the bus. <laughs> right. <laughs> can't, can't higher than four. 
So oh, good stuff. Is there anything that we haven't talked about? Um, no, I think I, I, I mean, I'm sure there's tons of things that I'll remember as soon as I walk out this door or crutch out this door as it, as it were today. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, the GT improvement program is, is a great opportunity. And, um, um, for those students that are out for those soldiers, uh, those airmen, um, that are out there, um, that are not exceptionally happy where they are, or maybe want to expand and grow. This is a great opportunity. Come in. We, um, we're not going to bite. It's not, uh, it's a lot of it's review. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a good workout for the brain. Is there any final piece of advice you'd like to leave our audience off with? Sure. Um, let me think of one. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're thinking, I'll shamelessly preview an upcoming product. Okay. Just running off of what you said, that uh, people who are just looking for a change or they feel caught where they are, uh, we're very quickly, or very soon, excuse me, going to release a, a video showing people all the options they have other than ETSing. So if you are unhappy where you are, if you feel like you'd like a new challenge, if you feel like for whatever reason you're not fitting where you are, the GT Enhancement Program is a great starting point rather than getting out. Well, I, I, I guess here's my piece of advice because uh, your uh, little segue uh, reminded me of this. I was in the Army Reserve, as I said, and I was not happy where I was. I, I switched out of being a drill sergeant because I don't know if you know this, you go down one summer and you're 35 and all the privates are 18. You go away, you come back, now you're 36 and the privates are 18. Then you're 37 and the privates are 18. So I feel like Matthew McConaughey has a, <laughs> has a quote about this. <laughs> they, they're, they're always 18. So um, I decided I was getting a little old and I needed to move on to try something new, to try something new. Um, and I joined another Army Reserve unit and, again, was exceptionally unhappy. I was, at that time, I had 19 years and three months, and I was ready to walk out the door. Give yeah. it all up. That's, uh, that's pretty unhappy. 19 years and three months. Um, and one day, uh, I was at the Situate Art Festival and saw then Sergeant First Class Bluen um, and said, hey, you guys need drill sergeants over there in the National Guard? And that started it. That started the whole thing. And that's, there's always an opportunity for you to be happier. And, and I couldn't be happier where I am right now. You know? Sounds like you, again, the opportunity chose you, but you had your eyes open. Right, right. Uh, you have to, you have to, if you want something, you've got to go for it, right? Um, and you've got to go for it in the appropriate way. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. This has been episode to be numbered later of the hindsight. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. <laughs>